What's going on guys? I'm Zachary Gray and today we're back in South Mississippi looking for some snakes. Now I've been spending a lot of time out here looking for rattlesnakes and one thing that's really cool is right now a lot of baby snakes are being born. Specifically what I want to find is a baby cottonmouth and a baby copperhead. Now we've done a cottonmouth versus copperhead video in the past but one thing I've noticed is a lot of people have a rough time telling the difference between the babies. So that's what we're going to be looking for today. We're going to be looking for two newborn snakes and hopefully comparing them next to each other to help you guys identify them better. Let's go. Cottonmouths and copperheads are two of the most common snakes found in South Mississippi. This time of year, many baby snakes are being born, so we have a really good chance of seeing some. And we're heading to an area where I've recently seen some baby cottonmouths. And of course, we're keeping an eye out for other snakes that live in this area too. Is that a little snake? That's a little snake. Oh, it's a corn snake. It's not a rat snake. I thought it was a rat snake. Hello, little buddy. What are you doing? That is one of the coolest snakes you can find out here. Check that out. That is a little baby corn snake. Man, I've only found a couple of corn snakes out here in this area. He is beautiful. Oh man, I love how they look when they're babies. A lot of people actually confuse this snake with baby copperheads, which is a real shame. They don't look anything alike other than the fact that they've kind of got a light tannish coloration. You can tell it's a corn snake by those little baby patterns. They've kind of got more orange along their head as a baby. Look at how friendly he is, friendly as. They've got a little narrow head which is a big difference between copperheads and these snakes, being as, uh, well, copperheads are a viper, so they have venom glands on the side of their head. But what's interesting is when corn snakes get upset, they will actually flatten out their body and flatten out their head as to look like a venomous snake. This would be this year's hatchling. They're actually starting to hatch out right now. So this could be, you know, born just in the last week. Have a look at how strong he is. Holds up his whole body. These guys are really good climbers. They're mostly bird and lizard eaters out here. Very much so different than copperheads. Beautiful animal. A snake that you oftentimes see kept as a pet, but is really fun when you find him wild. Awesome little guy. We're gonna go ahead and get him off the road and keep looking for our target snakes. All right, see you, little buddy. Keep looking for our snakes. Get off the road. You're gonna get hit. There you go. <laughs> Cottonmouths are the only subaquatic pit viper in the world which means if you're gonna find one, you've gotta be around water. While Mississippi doesn't have the swamps and marshes like Louisiana does in this area, they can still be found around these small ponds and these low, wet areas. This area also has some of the brightest colored moccasins that I've ever seen in the south. The little moccasin right there. See him? He's a little tiny baby. Hello, buddy. What are you doing? One thing you'll notice, he's sitting coiled up at the base of this tree. Now what moccasins tend to do, and other pit viper species that live in this area, they'll sit right at the base of the trees and face up the tree. And they did a really cool study, specifically on the timber rattlesnake, just a few years ago, that they'll sniff up to a tree that has the prey item up in the tree, such as a squirrel or a rodent, and they would sit with their head facing up. And it's actually been considered that other snakes do this as well. And I have to guess that that's what this moccasin is doing, waiting for something to come down the tree up. I actually think I've got a tiny snake hook with me. Did I bring it? Yeah, I brought it. Let's go. Tiny snake hook for the win. This is my little baby snake hook handler. Come on. Here we come. Have a look at that. Oh, look at him. He's a little cutie. That is 100% a baby cottonmouth. I couldn't put a hand near this snake. It's too small and they strike way too fast. Cottonmouths do have venom similar to that of a rattlesnake, however one this small probably wouldn't be able to give a lethal dosage, but it would still definitely send me to the hospital. Notice it's got that bright yellow tail. That is the number one thing that these snakes have when they're a baby. What they'll do is they'll wiggle that little yellow tail. What it'll do is it'll attract mice and uh, little insects, anything that these guys will eat basically. They'll eat little lizards, frogs, anything, and that little tail looks kind of like a worm. And that's what they'll do is they'll sit still and wiggle it back and forth very slowly to attract their prey. Well, this is exactly what we're looking for. He's got a reddish tinge to him, which makes him really gorgeous. Hello, little buddy. He's very defensive. Moccasins are a very defensive species. Once they're cornered or confronted like this, they'll just sit and face you. And 
and they won't come after you or anything like that. However, if he tried to escape back to the water and I stood in his way, he'd try to go right past me. That's not him chasing or anything like that. That's just how they do, trying to get to the water. The world's only subaquatic pit viper. And they look very, very different when they're a little baby like this. Well, now that we've got our first snake, I'm gonna hold on to this little guy and hopefully we'll be able to find a baby copperhead to where we can show the two side by side because their patterns are very similar. Now that we've got our cotton mouth, it's time to get a copperhead. So we're heading to another area where I've recently seen quite a few. Copperheads are actually pretty easy to find in this area under the right conditions, so it shouldn't take us too long. And it's clear that the conditions are really good today because we've got another snake in the road. Here we go, we got a snake. A racer? No, it's a rat snake. That is really nice size gray rat snake. Gray rat snakes are actually a pretty common species out here. I see them quite often on these back roads. Now gray rat snakes, you can tell it's a gray rat snake and not a Texas or a western rat snake by the tongue. In fact in this area they have a very similar coloration to the western rat snake but you can tell that it's a gray via their tongue and their head. They have a little bit more of a narrow head because uh, their brown coloration in this area looks similar to that of a western. And you'll only find the western rat snake west of the Mississippi River, which obviously, since we're in Mississippi, this would be the eastern side of the Mississippi River. They're a blotched rat snake. They've got all kinds of little blotches on them. And he was a speedy little guy. Hello. He's very calm. Very chill snake. All right, beautiful snake. Get back in there. Let's take off. Beautiful. Woohoo! That's a win. This area is right close to a small branch of wetlands, so it's really good for copperheads. While not nearly as aquatic as cottonmouths, copperheads will oftentimes be found near water. The biggest problem with copperheads is their camouflage. These snakes are super difficult to spot, even when you know they're there. So you always gotta be looking for them carefully. And you always have to watch where you step if you're walking in areas that they live. Probably the smallest copperhead I've ever seen. Hello, right there. Here, let me give him a second. Look how tiny he is. He is a tiny little sucker. Hello, little baby. Look at how camo he is. What are you doing? Oh, look at how cute he is. What? That is newborn, newborn. Oh. Look at him. Hello, buddy. He's got a bright yellow tail. Just like the cottonmouth, they have a bright yellow tail as a baby. Now what you'll notice about this snake is it's probably about half the size of the cottonmouth. Copperheads are born much smaller, but even by newborn copperhead standards, this is a very small snake. I've never actually seen a copperhead this small. You can see he's got a couple of broken bands right there. In this part of Mississippi, that's actually fairly common for them to mostly have some broken bands. Full pattern ones are actually less common broken bandage. Oh, there we go. He's sitting still for me for a second. I'm not sure how long that's going to last. But have a look at that snake. That is newborn. Copperheads are definitely a smaller snake on average than cottonmouths. Oh, look at him. He's looking right at me. He's aimed right at me. This snake would definitely not be able to pose a fatal bite to me. However, if you're ever bit by a copperhead, please seek medical attention. In fact, the last death to happen from a copperhead was this past year. Somebody was bit by a very small baby, more like a yearling than a newborn and did not receive medical assistance and they had allergic reaction to the venom and did unfortunately pass away. So that's why I tell people, even though copperheads have a mild venom compared to other venomous snakes, do not ignore it if you get bit by the snake. Get to a hospital, get antivenom, get basic first aid at least. Now baby copperheads look very similar to baby cottonmouths. And as you guys already saw, we have found a baby cottonmouth. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna go get him and 
and uh, we're gonna put these two snakes side by side. This is actually the second time we're putting cottonmouths and copperheads next to each other. Don't worry, we're gonna be careful to keep them apart. They're definitely not gonna eat each other, but uh, we're gonna put them next to each other and show you guys some very distinct differences between these two related species. Hey little buddy, thank you for waiting for me. I've got my little cottonmouth container here, and as you can see, very camouflage, baby copperhead. Right there, so I'm gonna carefully, very carefully, you know, in second thought, I'm going to use this. There we go. Flip a little way. Never want to touch these snakes. Oh my goodness, you are big compared to the little... little oh, he's feisty. So we have a lot of time to rest. Have a look at that. Now have a look at the difference in size between a newborn cottonmouth and a newborn copperhead. Both of these are 100% newborns. This is how big a cottonmouth is born. And while that is an incredibly small copperhead, like even by copperhead standards, these both, both of these snakes are 100% newborns. You can see they both have yellow tails. And notice the distinct difference in pattern. The copperhead has more hourglass patterns, whereas the cottonmouth has more this swiggly banding. It's very different, very distinct. You can see the color difference. Now this is actually a very, very pretty baby cottonmouth. Oh, it's okay, little copperhead. I'm keeping him away from you. Now I don't think that these either of these snakes would try to fight each other or would try to eat each other. However, the baby cottonmouth, if they were to, would be the one to cause the issues. And that's why I'm kind of managing the baby cottonmouth at the moment. Whereas the copperhead is very well behaved and he can just sit there. My purpose in bringing both of these snakes next to each other is to help you guys learn to identify them. Now obviously both of these snakes are venomous and you don't want to be messing with either. The more you see these two snakes, the easier it is to identify them and a lot of people have trouble identifying baby cottonmouths because they oftentimes do look like copperheads. As many of you guys also know, both of these snakes are very closely related. They're both in the same genus and they're very, very similar to each other. They both love aquatic habitats, however, they can live in these upland areas. The difference is the water moccasin is much, much more aquatic based than the copperhead. Cottonmouths are almost always found by water, or at least heading to water. Copperheads can live in drier, more arid areas, or even more mountainous regions than cottonmouths can. And cottonmouths' venom is considerably worse than that of the copperhead. Copperhead's venom is probably like less than half the potency of a cottonmouth. Cottonmouth's venom is more similar to that of a very weak rattlesnake venom. And their venom is very, very interesting because it has cytotoxin and all these different kinds of toxins that we're still learning about. In fact, the copperhead's venom is weak enough to where it's being used as a cancer treatment, which is actually really cool. A lot of people see these snakes that like they have no use, they're worthless, they're just dangerous animals, and they're not. They're beautiful, beautiful animals that we need to leave out in these natural habitats. And you know, it's funny because we only really see a use for these snakes when it benefits us, but we really should leave them out in these environments. They're beautiful and I enjoy seeing these snakes. Uh, but it is interesting to note that their venom does have medical uses, which is really, really cool. Well, I'm really glad we're getting to show you guys both of these snakes next to each other. They're both very similar when they're at this size, and it's just kind of a cute little mini version of what we've already done, putting a cottonmouth and a copperhead next to each other. I just figured it would be a really cool idea to show you guys both the differences when they're babies. They're very beautiful North American vipers. We're going to go ahead and put this cottonmouth back by his water and the copperhead right back by his tree, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. All right, little buddy, get back up where we found you. Boop, boop, boop. Go on, kick it. Little cutie. See you little buddy. Back by your tree. See ya. Well guys, that's it for this video. We really hope you all enjoyed. If you did, consider subscribing and liking for more in the future. And we will see you guys next time.